This is Dan, and this is the Napkin Academy. Our lesson now, let's review. We'll remember that we're in the middle of visual thinking process step three, which is imagining. We're getting started with imagining, and that means we're starting with the squid. We're starting to go in detail through the squid, and we're going to start, of course, with the first letter, S, which, as we remember, stands for simple. But of course, we recall that the way the squid works is it's always binary. S stands for, do we want to represent our idea with a simple picture, or do we want to represent our idea with an elaborate picture? And it is a decision that we have to make. Now let's say that I wanted to simply explain to someone what a rainbow is. Okay, I could draw a picture of a rainbow and this, of course, is the simple picture of the rainbow. I could say, you know, it looks something like that. And as we all know, at the bottom of every rainbow is a little pot of gold. So that's my simple view of a rainbow. Well, now, what might be my elaborate view? Well, how about something that shows the entire electromagnetic spectrum? So a rainbow is actually what happens when light reflects at different wavelengths according to what's the visible part of the electromagnetic spectrum, not to be confused with the ultraviolet part, nor with the infrared part, nor of course with TV and radio waves, nor with microwaves, nor with x-rays. The rays that we're interested in when we're talking about a rainbow are only those that are in the visible. You get the idea. Simple or elaborate. Both show a rainbow. Let's try another one. Now, let's say we were talking about uh, security, and we were talking about how do we lock things up. Well, one simple way we could show it is we could simply say, you know, we have a lock, and every lock, of course, needs a key. And that's how we're going to secure things. That's our simple picture. I think we can all understand that one. But what if we wanted to make something that was more elaborate? Well, here's our, here's our, what is that? appearing down there. Get rid of that. Here is our elaborate version of the same basic idea. And now all we're doing is we're showing the same kind of a lock, we're showing the same kind of a key, but now we've gone into a great amount of elaboration to indicate exactly how things need to fit together and exactly how they need to work. Simple or elaborate. Both show a lock. Let's try one more. You know, I could show in this case, let's talk about uh, a flower. Some of you may have been drawing a flower at the end of one of our last exercises. So let's go ahead and just think about a flower. What is a simple way of representing a flower? Well, I could show this, but what I'm really intrigued about is the process of photosynthesis. So if I take a flower, and if I add some sunlight, and if I add some water, my flower grows. Isn't that amazing? How does that happen? Well, that's the process of photosynthesis. Well, there's a simple way to describe it. Well, what might be an elaborate way? Well, how about the famous Krebs cycle? The Krebs cycle is the process which takes place within any kind of a cell that generates energy within a living organic aerobic cell. This is the process by which sunlight enters in in the form of electricity. Of, of energy and causes a whole bunch of chemicals to react in a certain way which brings sunlight in and comes out in the form of energy as sugars and those sugars are in fact what allow our plant to grow so here we have a simple versus an elaborate description of the process of how a plant grows now, there's a reason why we've spent this time looking at two different examples, and it comes down to something that we're going to call the simplicity principle. And it's not a very simple principle to describe, but it will be a simple one to draw. So let's try the hard way first. Let's try the elaborate way. The simplicity tell, principle tells us that an audience's, this is our audience, tolerance for detail an audience's tolerance for detail is directly proportional to someone's level of expertise. So if I'm an expert, 
I have a different level of tolerance than someone who might be a newbie. That's the simplicity principle. An audience's tolerance for detail or elaboration is directly proportional to that audience's level of expertise with the subject. Let's let's go ahead and just write that down. I, I, well, let's just make the statement to show the difference between writing something down and drawing it out. An audience's tolerance, write this along with me, this is a good one to write down too. An audience's tolerance for detail or elaboration is directly proportional to their expertise. My gosh, what a terrible way to say it. What an elaborate, wordy way to say it. Let's, let's go ahead and show it the right way. What the simplicity principle really tells us, let's go ahead and make it visual, is that if we want to show non-experts, let's say these are little kindergartners, our idea, and we show them a really, really detailed and elaborate view of our idea with all of the nuances and all of the bells and whistles and all of the things that are involved, they are not going to be happy. They are not going to like that at all. Non-experts do not want elaborate because they don't know initially what they're looking at. And if we show them something elaborate, immediately the minds close before they have a chance to get into it. The converse is also true, which is to say that if we're going to show an idea to experts and we show them a really, really simple view, there's our idea for experts. They are also not going to be happy at all because they're going to say, what? That's it? You are clearly incompetent. You clearly don't know what you're talking about. So experts do not want simple if it is the area of their expertise. The opposite is what we want. Experts want something when it's in their area of expertise, which is the elaborate version, because then it shows that you know what you're talking about, it shows that you've done your homework, and it complements the fact that they already have a great deal of expertise. They are totally willing to be able to accept an, an elaborate version of the picture. In fact, they're going to expect an elaborate version of the picture. They're going to love that elaborate version and love you because it shows your knowledge. The non-expert, the newbies, our little kindergartners though, they want, the non-experts definitely want initially the simple view of the picture. Non-experts love the simple one because it gives them a way to get into the idea. And then eventually, as people become experts, we can start to make things more and more elaborate. So that's really the idea behind the simplicity principle. And this is important to us because it really indicates when we should be thinking, not only for ourselves, but of course, obviously for our audience, of when do we want to make a simple picture versus when do we want to make an elaborate picture. And the simple answer is as follows. If we want to say to someone, if we want to show someone, and we want to make them excited by the idea of saying, you know what, we can do it. That's when we show a simple picture. If we just want to motivate people and get them excited and say, we can do it, we show a simple picture. If, however, we want to say, but it will be hard, then, Mr. Expert, then we want it to be elaborate. We can do it. Let's make it simple and inspiring, but it will be hard. Now, why would we want to show that something's going to be hard? Well, either because it really, really is going to be very hard to get all of these pieces in alignment and get all of them working together. It is going to be hard. That's the truth. And if we want to, if this person is willing, if they're an expert and they're willing to accept the truth at this point, that it will be hard and they're willing to uh, go in there and roll up their sleeves and get engaged, we want to show them the elaborate. And, of course, if we want to also show 
that something is likely to be expensive. This isn't pandering. If we want to get people excited about saying, why don't, let's go, come on, we can do it. Let's show them the simple view and let's not worry right now about how much it's going to cost. We'll show simple, we'll go to elaborate. That's when we decide which one we really want to use. So here's an example. If I wanted to explain to, uh, say, a group of little kindergartners, if I was asked to come in and explain the Internet and why it's interesting and my, might want to learn how to become computer adept, I would draw, draw a very simple picture that would say, you know, look, this is you over here, and if you really need me to explain it to you, what's going to happen with the Internet is it will allow you to communicate with your friend right through this amazing computer system called the Internet. Yes, we can. Great. But you know what? If you're going to try to sell consulting services to, you know, a major company, a major corporation or organization, they're not going to want to see this understanding of the Internet. Uh, do you think that that's going to get them to give you lots of money and a big old project? Probably not. The picture that you want to show is another view of the Internet, and it's going to look something like this. And you might say to your consulting experts, here is our view of the Internet. And of course, it all starts out with our various databases served through various APIs into our structured data layer upon which we have our metadata, which is serving all of our various databases. Of course, all of those pulled together by our services layer and on top of all that, the presentation layer, which actually feeds out through a remote bus the actual uh, HTML or HTTP or through FTP servers. And we have our security single sign-on engine, which is going to take us out to the cloud or any kind of virtual private networks and of course driving all of this underneath it is going to be our taxonomy and our metadata engine of course which is going to allow us to access all kinds of business feeds there you go and oh guess what remember it's going to be really it's going to be really secure elaborate when we want to sell someone we can do it but it's going to be hard or it's going to cost money that's when we make the elaborate picture so that's our first stop on the squid. Simple or elaborate. The first decision we make as we're starting to think very broadly about using our imagination to think of how to describe our idea. So here's what we'd like to do for the exercise now. I warned you and, and here we go. So what I'd like you to do is think about the object we'd picked in the last lesson. Are you going to use your imagination on an orange? I did an apple. Now I'd like you to do an orange or on a computer or use your imagination for a car and what we want you to do is to make two drawings and take your time and one of them is going to be a simple drawing and one of them is going to be a very detailed and elaborate drawing whatever you think is the right way to do it and what I'd like you to do is think about one way that you'd use your pictures to explain your object to someone who's never seen one before and another one to someone who is a real expert. Those are the two drawings. Go ahead. Hey, thank you all for another great lesson. This is Dan signing off from the Napkin Academy, but don't go away. Now on our new platform, you can still submit your homework. Debbie, our community manager, is going to join you right now to show you exactly how to do that. And I really encourage you, do your homework. Okay, take it away, Debbie. See you soon. We hope you enjoyed this Napkin Academy classic video. We've made it easier than ever to share your homework. After you've completed your homework and have a JPEG or PNG file saved on your computer, come back to this course. Once you're back here, scroll to the bottom of the screen. And in the comments box, you can add a comment. I'm just going to call this one my homework. You can also add images by clicking on the Insert Edit Image button here. In the source box, click on the file. In the Images window, click on Upload. And then click on Add Files. This is going to take you to your computer where you can search for your images. I'm just going to search for mine in pictures. And I'm going to choose this image here. You can also add multiple images here. Click Upload. After the upload is complete, click Close. Then scroll down 
and you'll see that the last image is here and it's checked. This is the one we just uploaded. Click Insert. I suggest in the dimensions box you change the maximum to 1200 pixels and leave the constrained proportions box checked. You can also add an image description here if you'd like. Click OK. You'll see that your image has been added to your comment. And now the last step, the most important one, make sure that you click the green comment button here to upload your homework to the Napkin Academy. We hope to see your homework soon.